This important information is provided by Safe Sports Network, a nonprofit dedicated to youth sports safety. According to the CDC, heat related illnesses during practice and games is a leading cause of death among U.S. high school athletes. The good news is that heat illnesses are largely preventable and treatable if proper precautions are put into place. That is why it's so important to know how to identify and treat each type of heat related illnesses as well as to know what you can do to reduce the risk of it in the future. There are different types of heat illnesses which range in severity and treatment. There are heat cramps, heat exhaustion, heat syncope, and exertional heat stroke. Heat cramps are considered one of the more minor heat illnesses and consist of involuntary muscle cramping. Though not necessarily caused by heat alone, but in a combination with dehydration and or lack of adequate electrolytes in the diet. Treatment can include stretching or massaging the muscle, drinking cold fluids and replacing electrolytes, or you can ice massage the area to help reduce the cases of severe cramping. Heat exhaustion is one of the most common forms of heat illnesses and can be found among a wide range of active people. It's characterized by inability to continue exercising in the heat due to cardiovascular insufficiency or an energy depletion. Common signs and symptoms include fatigue and weakness, heavy sweating, headache, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and lightheadedness and dehydration. Someone with heat exhaustion should be moved into a shaded or cool area, remove excess clothing, provide ice bags or cool towels and fans, and provide them with cool fluids to help rehydrate. Heat syncope refers to fainting in environments with high temperatures. And this usually occurs during the initial days of heat exposure and is caused by inadequate blood flow to the brain, causing the person to lose consciousness. Move the person to a shaded or cool area. Elevate their legs, which will help return blood flow to the heart. Rehydrate with cool fluids. Exertional heat stroke can be fatal if not treated quickly and properly. Exertional heat stroke occurs when the body's internal temperature rises to a point where the body can no longer manage to effectively cool itself, leading to organ shutdown and eventually death. Two main criteria for diagnosing exertional heat stroke are rectal temperature above 104 degrees and central nervous system dysfunction. Other heat-related illness symptoms can occur as well. Immediately remove the person from play and remove all equipment and excess clothing. Cool the person as quickly as possible within 30 minutes. Ideally, whole body immersion is best, using a tub or tank filled with water and ice being constantly stirred. Another method you could use if a tub isn't available is using a tarp, placing the victim inside the tarp, pouring water and ice on them, and shaking the tarp to circulate the water. With exertional heat stroke, you should call 911 as soon as possible, but transport to the hospital should only occur after the victim's core body temperature is below 101 degrees. Exertional heat stroke has a 100% survival rate when immediate cooling when using a cold water immersion tub is done within 10 minutes of collapse. There are several ways you can help reduce the likelihood of serious heat illnesses from occurring and ensuring proper care during such an event. Here are a few ideas to use. You should be wearing loose fitting or moisture wicking clothing, practice during cooler times of the day, and ensuring proper hydration. A person should drink 17 to 20 fluid ounces of water two to three hours before exercise, and another seven to 10 fluid ounces of water 10 to 20 minutes before exercise. You should also monitor the color of your urine. If your urine is becoming very dark, it could be a sign of dehydration. You can also weigh yourself pre and post exercise to determine the amount of sweat loss. Most importantly, you should slowly acclimatize to warmer weather. The body needs seven to 10 days to adequately adapt to exercise in warmer or hot weather. For more information on how to prevent, identify, or treat heat-related illnesses, review the links in the description below. Check out our website or reach out to your Safe Sports Network athletic trainer. Thank you. Safe Sports Network is your source for youth sports safety information. We're supported by the community. If you would like to donate, visit our website to learn more.